Let's take a look at the King James Version of uh, Romans 8. Let's back up a little bit into Romans 7 to get the context of uh, what we're talking about. Uh, oh, wretched man that I am, who can deliver me from the body of this death? That seems to be the testimony of the standard hypocrisy. Uh, let's see. For we know, let's go back to in chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. People say this is Paul talking as an apostle. Isn't that? It's hilarious. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Again, this is before conversion, not after. Sin doesn't dwell in you after Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It doesn't say some unrighteousness. It says all unrighteousness, and he purges us from iniquity. Verse 18. For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, that we are to crucify the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of Christ, and we are to de deny ungodliness and worldly lust. This is part of crucifying the flesh. Those of you who love worldly music and you love worldly videos and go to movies that are sensual, earthy, and devilish. I know that in me dwelleth no good thing, but in my flesh... For to will is present with me. I want to serve God. But then, how to perform that, which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, that the evil, but the evil which I would not, that I do. This is not the confession of an apostle of Christ. This is a person who, before conversion, before the blood of Christ cleanses him from all on righteousness, he wants to serve God, but in his, but he wants to serve flesh and sin. There's a, the sin factor has not been dealt with by the blood of Christ and the will of the Father, so it's indwelling inside of the flesh, the body. Now, if I do that, verse twenty. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Their sin has dominion over the hypocrite. Sin has dominion over the sinner, the unregenerate sinner. Sin is God of the flesh. Moving on into uh, Romans chapter 7, 21. I find then a law that when I would do evil, when I, when I would do good, Evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. This is Paul talking about his zealousness before his conversion, his zealousness to rout out the Christians, his zealousness to uphold Jewish law, and he felt that Christians were the enemy of God, and he caused havoc. He sent some people to prison. He was a witness of Stephen's death and those who stoned Stephen put their coats near Paul where he was he was called Saul then as a bearing witness of the death of Stephen who testified it who testified the testimony of Jesus Christ verse 22 for I delight in the law of God after the inward man but I See, another law in my members, that is in my flesh, this indwelling sin, this cursed thing, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. If you'll read the epistles of Paul, he talks about warring against principalities and powers that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, and so on. And this is after conversion. You become equipped with the power of God and the weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That includes imaginations, thoughts that are contrary to Christ, to bring them into captivity, 
arrest those thoughts so they don't bear fruit and manifest themselves in you yielding to tempt or us yielding to temptation for we have these weapons that are mighty through God now if we walk after the spirit and not after the flesh you'll see that happening here as we read on O oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death it is a wretchedness it is a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde condition that is the fruit of hypocrisy it is so frustrating and many people that have gone through hypocrisy have then stepped into atheism other other isms and religions that are totally away from God they no longer can retain or want to retain knowledge of God so God has given them over to a reprobate mind and this is the danger of hypocrisy not only hypocrites need to repent and turn away from their wicked way so that they can receive the engrafted Word of God and the Holy Spirit as a gift of holiness to them so that they become the temple of the Holy Ghost and they fulfill not the lust of the flesh because they crucify the deeds of the flesh with the help of the Spirit of God because Jesus suffered in the flesh and we are no better we must follow Jesus and we learn from his sufferings the power of the cross and his grace Jesus said take up your cross deny yourself and follow me in verse 25 I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord here is a here is the light of deliverance so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin so I'm gonna crucify the flesh the deeds of the flesh which is unbelief it is uncleanness it is murder it is theft it is unrighteousness it is hypocrisy there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death here's the deliverance this is the deliverance of following Christ receiving his spirit and walking after his spirit and not after the flesh for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh I love that he condemned sin in the flesh for the righteousness of the law might be that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit again we're looking into the mindset for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God I hope this is a blessing to you it was for me I'm always blessed when I share the word because I feel the Holy Spirit moving in me and directing me what to read and how to share may God bless you in your walk in the spirit and not after the flesh